Hey, what's poppin' everyone? So in this video, I'm going to talk about the path that you should take AWS certifications in 2020 and beyond. All right, I'm making this video because with the new database certification and some certifications being renamed, like the data analytics certification being renamed from big data analytic or big data certification and the solution Arch architect associate exam being reworked, I thought right now would be a good time to look at what order you should take the AWS certifications in. I'm going to go through the order I took them in initially, maybe like half a year ago, and then what order you should take them in now, depending on what you want to get out of them. And of course, not all AWS certifications are treated equally, but they are very useful as they can help you get a new job or maybe get a raise in your current job. Anyways, uh, this video took a lot of effort to research and produce. So if you could, could you obliterate that like button for me? It would do wonders for me. Thanks. So if you go to the AWS Learning Path site, you'll see that there's like a million different certification paths, which is part of the reason why I made this video. I wanted to kind of combine them all into a path that you can take without having to like know all the million different paths. And then depending on your role, you can do different things as well. So I thought I would give you the best information without having to dive into all this nonsense. All right, the first certification that you might hear of or think of as being like the easiest is definitely the cloud practitioner uh, certification. And I personally did not take this one. I went straight to developer associate. And the reason I didn't take it is because I didn't think it was very useful. I already had a, a general understanding of AWS when I took the developer associate exam. And this one, I, I would not recommend unless you want to, this to be your final certification. In which case, yeah, go for it because it's pretty easy to do. I think you can take it online now. So yeah, go for it. If this is the only certification you're going to get, do it. Otherwise, then I would go for maybe the associates first. All right. So for the question of what associate exam to start with or which associate certification should you get if you're only to get one, I would want to say developer associate is now the new starting exam and the exam to get if you're only going to get one of these associate certifications. I got all three, but if you're only going to get one or if you're just going to start in one, then it used to be the solutions architect associate, but I want to say it's developer associate now. The reason I'm saying this is because they removed some things from the new 2020 architect associate or solutions architect associate certification. So it's not as general as it used to be. And that makes developer associate more general in this case. And it'll give you a better path and understanding of AWS as a whole. Uh, of course, you still can do architect associate first as well. Uh, they're both very good certifications to start with AWS. But if you're only doing one, do get the developer. But if you're wanting to go even further beyond, <laughs> even further beyond, I would go to get the architect associate and the developer associate. And then if you really want to, you can get the sysops administrator associate as well, because this one is important for people who want to create automatable and repeatable deployment of applications. So if you want to be really be working in DevOps, then this is definitely pretty much mandatory as well. Oh, one thing, I'm not really referencing these learning paths they're putting up here. These are like learning paths for getting these cert the individual certifications and whatnot. I'm referencing the learning path as in which path you should take to get all the certifications or certain certifications for individual roles. But on this one, the um, SysOps Administrator certification, it was probably the hardest associate certification because of kind of the amount of detail you kind of have to know for individual like services. And it's really, if you want to be a sysadmin, I would definitely take this sysops administrator and learning all the, the little nitty gritty details that you need to learn for that. Now I want to move on to the specialty certifications now because generally people take the specialty certifications before they take the two AWS professional certifications. So the, of course the certification you want to talk about with the specialty is the new one, the database uh, certification. And it's a specialty. So that generally means you want to take at least one associate certification first before you take this one. And if there's one you want to take first, I, for this one, I want to say you should take the sysops administrator. And it's because of the managing aspect. So you want to learn how to manage AWS databases as well. And sysops administrators is, of course, 
good for managing things. So that's that's my reasoning behind that. But you can take honestly any of the, the um, specialty examinations in any order. They're not super related to each other. While some do like have some impact, like for the set specialty, the security specialty certification, it might help with all of them because security is very important to AWS. But database specialty, there is in AWS Learning Path, you only have like three things to study or three learning path things. Maybe that's because it's a new certification, but it leads me to believe that one might want to take this one first because it's new. And while there not, might not be much too much study material for it right now, I believe that it will be an easier one, maybe than some of the harder specialties like big data or sorry, data analytics or machine learning or networking, of course, the hardest. All right, now I want to show you the, I guess, the route I took to maybe give you some insights into my thought process behind taking them in a certain order to become the AWS master. So the first one, developer associate, I mentioned that before, into the solutions architect associate, and then eventually the professional much later on, probably one of the final exams you're going to take if you want to go down that route. So architect, and then to the sysops administrator associate, and then I took the security specialty exam. And this was probably one of my best certification exams. And then after security, I took big data, which is now known as data analytics. I didn't take the cloud, uh, what was that called? The cloud practitioner, like once again, because I don't think it's that needed. It's kind of useless in my opinion. But after that, I took the machine learning one. Don't mind developer. There's not a developer machine learning yet. <laughs> But that's the order I've taken it. Then I would have probably went for the networking or maybe the database one after that because I haven't taken that one yet. And I want to touch on why I took the data analytics exam or the big data certification exam, what it used to be called, before I took the machine learning one. And it's because you kind of need to know a little bit of data analytics before you even get to machine learning because machine learning requires a lot of data, of course. And Data Analytics really um, kind of shows you how you can learn about collection, ingestion, storage, processing, visualization. So you need to have all this done with the data before you can, you can even get through the machine learning aspects of it. So that's why I took Data Analytics before the machine learning one, which was really unique because it's, I mean, the machine learning exam was really unique because it really didn't have too much AWS about AWS on uh, like, services on it like there was maybe like a couple like SageMaker and some smaller ones as well but like it, this one exam might be the one that you don't have to take any associate certification before taking this one but it, it might be useful of course to take the associates but this um, machine learning certification was really about the, the machine learning algorithm so you would really want to understand all those algorithms like look just looking at this path alone it took, look, look how many like um, things they want you to do before you even take this machine learning specialty exam. This is, of course, for the developer. But um, there's also going down the route of data scientists. So machine learning is, of course, very good. You want to be a machine learning developer, machine learning data scientist. Go for it. Take that machine learning certification. You might not even need the associate certifications. But I, I do want to put a little point here. In their, in their AWS's path, they show security as being, I guess, important for this machine learning. So that might, uh, it's also, this is for data scientists. But if we look back at developer, machine learning security, also very important. So if you really want to like get a head, uh, knee up, then maybe take the security specialty before the machine learning certification. And that will help you out as well. So now I want to go through individual roles and in like other certifications that I didn't mention. So the storage learning path, they just recommend getting the solutions architect associate. I mean, it kind of makes sense. If you want to store stuff on AWS, it's pretty easy. So just get the associate, solutions architect associate, and you should be good. Just store, store away in S3 buckets and whatnot. All right, so now into the big certifications. So DevOps professional, probably one of the hardest certifications you can get at AWS because the questions are much longer and 
they're much more thorough. So you need to you know a much general, much more general idea of what AWS does for you and how you can work with it. So of course you want to get the developer associate to even get started on DevOps Pro. And then they say or, but I would recommend get the SysOps admin associate as well because they do have similar concepts, but they do also have much different, or they have additional information in each of them that will be helpful to take this. I would also take maybe the security specialty and data analytics here for a DevOps engineer, mainly because those are some very important ones and maybe even networking as well to get this DevOps engineer one. All right, now let's talk about one of the easiest certifications you can get now that we talked about all the hard ones. Well, not all the hard ones. There's one left that's a little bit hard. So Alexa Skill Builder is probably one of the easiest because <laughs> they want to make Alexa be as easy as possible. And that's why they wanted to put the certification out there. So it's technically a specialty certification, so you don't need to take any certification to get to this one. And it's kind of important if you want to work in Alexa at any point in time, because, I mean, not the certification, at least the knowledge in it. You can become a UI developer, a voice designer, all these other things, solutions architects. So it's really for everyone, the certification. <laughs> That's what they're kind of gearing it towards. So you can take this without any associate, and it's fine. All right, so now on to one of the hardest, if not the hardest certification, advanced networking specialty. So this one is very difficult. You need to like spend months on end studying all about networking and trying to understand, like being like a really professional on networking. You have to really deep dive into it and like have to have create be able to create networks at scale for like companies. Or you have to be able to do that. And their path is kind of just don't take anything and then you take the specialty. Or maybe take the cloud practitioner. That'll help you. But in my opinion, I think you need at least developer associate. I, honestly, all the associates would be very helpful with this. And I don't think any other specialty will be really helpful with this if you just want to be like a network kind of engineer. I would just maybe just take the associates and then try to go all in on the specialty because it will take a long time to study for this one and to truly understand that. I just forgot there was one other certification that uh, I didn't mention in this video. And it's, the, of course, the Certified Solutions Architect Professional. Likely the hardest certification, maybe, maybe on the same level as networking, it's hard to say. But the Solutions Architect Professional is going to cover pretty much all of AWS. It might not cover like the machine learning algorithms. It's not going to ask you those kind of questions. It's going to ask you like how you're going to architect solutions and it's not going to ask you like specific individual like machine learning algorithms stuff like that because that's not really like useful for architecting certain solutions and this one the path you would want to take if you want to become a solution architect is honestly just take all of them before this one and not maybe not the um maybe not like the two like the cloud practitioner or whatever <laughs> because it's probably not useful at this point because but I mean unless you, you're thinking like ahead and you just want to get them all like collect them all like a batch collector yeah go for it <laughs> but um yeah I honestly would take pretty much all of them or at least get the knowledge required to pass all of them you don't have to actually take them because it would be 150 dollars ex an exam if you're using the fee waiver or the half half off fee waiver that you get when you pass the exam so yeah take them all and maybe you'll get this after like a year of studying or something, or maybe a couple weeks. Depends on how good of a studier you are. Anyways, that's this video. I hope you liked it. Make sure you to subscribe and like the video and whatnot. I'll talk to you later. Peace.